So until now we have been looking at the concept of Bravais lattices and lattices and crystal structures and we have been dealing uh, with a space which is called as a real space or, the, or, or a direct space. In this module uh, we would look into an associated concept of reciprocal space or reciprocal lattice. So we would learn that with every real lattice there is an associated reciprocal lattice, how to define it and how to calculate reciprocal lattice for a certain real lattice is something which we would discuss in this module. The reciprocal space is a Fourier transform of a real space and this is something which we have seen before. So imagine you have a one dimensional lattice with lattice point separated by a fixed separation A. Uh, we can define a one dimensional function which kind of mimics such a, a lattice in one dimensional such that that function corresponds of a series of delta functions and such that there is a delta function located at each lattice points in this one dimension system. So this kind of uh, uh, function where this n represents the location of the delta function within the one dimension lattice um, can be an analogous system uh, to this one dimension lattice. So let's see what happens to this function which is a density function if we Fourier transform it. So if we Fourier transform this row of x, uh, what we did here is put this function in here. So you have a summation over n as well, uh, such so that n goes over all the lattice points. Uh, then this such an integral we have seen before, it goes to such a term which is e raised over i k n a where n is again sum over all the latest points so n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity To evaluate this uh, summation, you have to look at what values this k can take. So there are two different subconditions which you can have. Either k is equal to 2 pi by a uh, multiplied by some m where m is an integer or k is not equal to 2 pi by a into an integer. So let's take this case where k equals to 2 pi by a into m. 
where m can take and which m can be any integer so for a specific value of m and a specific value of n this e raised to the power i k n a it gives you one now for a specific value of m if you sum over all n's this gives you infinity but you don't have one value of m you have multiple values of m which means that for each value of m it would gives you an infinity but at k points where k points are given by 2 pi by a into m for k not equals to 2 pi by a into m this summation simply gives you a zero so given the previous condition this with a specific value of k is equals to 2 pi by a into m you get infinity so you again you have delta functions but delta function this time in k said so that whenever the value of k is equal to 2 pi by a into m you get an in infinity and replacement of such a sum with such a sum is uh, known as Poisson summation rule uh, one can look it up 
but the main message here is that you know the Fourier transform have a series of delta function in k space such that the series is represented by an integer m this time. Uh, no one can define a certain value uh, quantity g such that g is uh, integer multiples of 2 pi by a. So this summation then t it takes a form of a summation over g such that g's can take all these different values. Uh, such a delta function series can be represented in k space by a series of delta functions like this. And now you can see that uh, each delta function is uh, you know, uh, separated by um, uh, distance 2 pi by a uh, since it is a reciprocal space. So we have a series of delta function in real space uh, and you take do the Fourier transform and you have a series of delta function in Fourier, Fourier space or reciprocal space. So this uh, space is basically associated with the real space. So to summarize, you do have a real space lattice. You take a Fourier transform of the real space lattice and you get a lattice-like structure in the Fourier space where you have a delta function whenever at the exactly at these specific k values whenever k is equal to this g where g as we said earlier is a uh, integer multiples of 2 pi by a let's move on to two dimensions so that you have such a, a delta peak series in real space not in one dimension but rather let's say in two dimensions uh, such that you can define r where r is a, a real lattice vector and using this r you can represent any point in this real lattice so such a summation along x direction uh, in two dimensional would be in a summation in capital R such that you have to sum over all the lattice point in this real lattice. Now if you take a Fourier transform of such a density function in two dimensions, so of course you have an integral in two dimensions then Fourier transformed, then you get uh, by using a similar procedure something like this which is 2 pi squared now divided by a squared multiplied by a delta function but this time the delta function is in a two-dimensional space and not in a one-dimensional space uh, such that uh, you have points here uh, in two-dimensional space uh, in the reciprocal space such that at each g values here you you get an infinity uh, so you can define a g vector in two dimensional and all these lattice point exactly in this lattice would have infinite infinity at these k values so exactly equals to g so what do we have is a real two dimensional lattice give rise to a reciprocal two-dimensional lattice and no one can think about three-dimension or one can generalize this whole principle is that given any real three-dimensional lattice or Bravais lattice uh, it would have a counterpart in reciprocal space uh, which would have its own lattice points so in the next slide we would specify this concept in more tangible form and come up with the concept of reciprocal lattice. So we understand that um, a reciprocal lattice or a reciprocal space is a Fourier transform of a real space or real lattice. Um, but that's a mathematical operation, the Fourier transform that is. Uh, can we have a better uh, physical analogy um, for the reciprocal space and uh, here I would present one such analogy between a plane wave uh, and reciprocal space. So imagine a plane wave, how do you describe a plane wave? You normally describe it by a phase factor 
which includes a wave vector k whose magnitude is given by 2 pi y lambda so the lambda is the wavelength of the wave uh, and the uh, and k is a vector because uh, it gives you the direction of propagation as well and r is the position at which you are looking at the phase of this wave uh, now compare a wave with a lattice a real lattice so a real lattice has a certain periodicity in real space uh, and the periodicity is in in captured in this uh, vector r such so that r is given by the real lattice vectors or of primitive lattice vectors so that r can uh, ha can identify the position of any object within the real lattice what's the analogy between these two objects uh, normally not so in general if you look at uh, k any wave vector k any in general it doesn't have the periodicity of such a lattice a real lattice uh, but you can certainly look for a uh, certain specific uh, wave vectors k uh, such that they do have the periodicity of the real lattice so and you give uh, all those k values which have the periodicity of a real lattice uh, a specific symbol let's say g so then you can construct another lattice within the k space uh, such that all the points within this lattice only correspond to those k vectors which have the same periodicity as that of the lattice uh, or that of the real lattice so what we have done is by this analogy we have taken one uh, lattice in a real space and described an associated uh, lattice in the reciprocal space uh, and these such that all these lattice points can be represented by a certain g vector so whenever g uh, k is equal to capital g then you have a lattice points here no we know that okay g are only those k values or k vectors which have the periodicity of lattice so mathematically it would mean that if we replace k by g then uh, for a certain value of r if i add capital R with it uh, I should get uh, the wave back so which would mean because G has a same periodicity as that of a real lattice which would mean that okay uh, a phase which is at R should be exactly equals to a, a phase which is equal to small r plus capital R so this is what you get and this relation means that uh, E uh, raised to the power I G dot capital R where g is the uh, corresponds to all the specific k points and r are the specific uh, points in the real space uh, such a phase is equal to one just by this relation so and this should be true for any value of r uh, because you defined uh, this vector such so that it should be a lattice uh, which should uh, have the same periodicity for any value of r so if you can construct such a lattice it would have this property so this relation is a very important relation it should be true for any uh, r vector in real space and this relationship connect the real space with the reciprocal space and uh, later on we would see it has important consequences so here is the uh, maybe this analogy is may help you better understand uh, what do we mean by a reciprocal space of a real lattice. So now we have a fair bit of idea about the existence of reciprocal space and uh, reciprocal lattice. Um, let's now be in a position now to formally. Uh, define a reciprocal lattice so we can say that with each physical crystal we can associate uh, two lattices a Bravais lattice in the real space uh, such that any point in the Bravais lattice is given by a, cap a vector uh, capital R uh, such that it is a linear combination of 
three primitive lattice vectors uh, and summed by a certain combination of integers so that such a combination it gives you any lattice point within the real lattice so that's not the only lattice associated with the physical crystal but another quantity another lattice is also can be associated with any physical crystal and that is a breve lattice in the reciprocal space uh, and to how do you define or how do you find such a reciprocal space so we present a theorem uh, without proof and the theorem says that given primitive lattice vectors a1 a2 and a3 so you can see here you have three primitive lattice vectors in real space uh, and using these three you can define any vector um, capital r to identify any location any lattice point within the real space so given such a primitive lattice vectors we can define a minimal set of b1 b2 b3 and what are these these are these three vectors which can be defined in this particular way so what do you have is so you by defining b1 it is equal to 2 pi by omega where omega is something which is the unit cell of this defined by the, these three uh, primitive lattice vectors in real space so uh, and the volume of such a unit cell is given by uh, a1 dotted with a2 cross a3 this is basically the volume of any parallelogram uh, so the b1 which is uh, one of the vector it is given by 2 pi by omega dotted where omega is the volume dotted with a2 cross a3 then b2 another vector is given by 2 pi by omega dotted with a1 dot a3 and similarly b3 so given a1 a2 a3 which are primitive lattice vector in real space you can define these three other um, unit vectors uh, such that these are linearly independent just like a1 a2 a3 were linearly independent these three are also linearly independent and more importantly they form a lattice and that lattice is represented by g just like uh, a real lattice was represented by capital r now this lattice is represented by capital g such that it can be written as a linear combination of these three uh, linearly independent uh, vectors uh, and here m1 and m2 and m3 are integers so that's the uh, theorem uh, what are these uh, b1 b2 b3s and g's so r as we say is a real lattice vector so which can give you the position of any lattice point in real space with respect to a lattice point uh, in that spirit uh, capital G is a lattice vector in a reciprocal space which gives you the location of any reciprocal lattice point within the reciprocal space and just like a1 a2 a3 were primitive lattice vectors uh, similarly these b1 b2 b3s which we define in this particular way they are primitive reciprocal lattice vectors so what does this theorem gives you it gives you a way to define reciprocal lattice vectors if you are given uh, real lattice vectors so let's say if you know what a1 a2 a3 are you can define uh, b1 b2 b3s and once you define them you can define any point within your reciprocal lattice vector or in general you can construct your reciprocal uh, lattice vector or reciprocal lattice um, as it is so in the last uh, slide we looked at a theorem which uh, let you define primitive lattice vector in reciprocal space uh, now we can try to uh, look at a few properties of these primitive uh, lattice vectors and uh, one of the more important one is those primitive lattice vectors are defined in such a way that the primitive lattice vector 
in real space and the primitive lattice vector in real space are connected by such a relationship so the dot product is given by 2 pi uh, delta function where delta function would be equals to 1 if i j equals to uh, if i equals to j and it would be equals to 0 for i not equals to j so let's we can check this property so let's say if i take i and j are same so a1 dotted with b1 so a1 dotted with by the theorem b1 is given by 2 pi by omega where omega is the volume of the unit cell uh, into a2 cross product a3 so this is uh, so i can take 2 pi by omega out and uh, a1 would be i get is a1 dotted with a2 cross a3 and what is this this is basically again the volume of the unit cell so that volume cuts out with omega and you are left with uh, 2 pi so this is equal to this dot product gives 2 pi if i and j are the same what if they are different so let's take a uh, i equals to 2 and j equals to 1 so you have a 2 dotted with the same thing 2 pi taken out and you have a, a 2 dot a 2 cross a 3 uh, a 2 cross a 3 joega that would be perpendicular to a 2 and something which is perpendicular to a 2 Oscar dot product a2 is hath that would be equals to zero so uh, del ij would be equals to zero if i and j are not the same so you can check for any other combination this is uh, one important properties uh, you can also start with this property and define b1 b2 b3s just like we did in the uh, theorem so this is a fundamental property here uh, we in the theorem we took for granted that b1 b2 b3 are primitive lattice vectors uh, but you can actually prove it using the property we derived up here so let's write an arbitrary point in reciprocal space let's say given by g so we know b1 b2 b3 these are some lattice vectors and we want to know whether they are primitive lattice vectors uh, but we start with the supposition that they are not primitive lattice vectors which means that you can uh, if you write the uh, this arbitrary position uh, in reciprocal space then m1 m2 and m3 can be integer or not integers if they prove to be integers then it means that uh, these b1 b2 b3s are primitive vectors if they are not integers it means that they are uh, not uh, primitive vectors so uh, let assume that r is a, a lattice vector in real space and it point to a certain lattice point in real space such that r equals to n1 n2 n3 uh, multiplied by their relative prim primitive vector then we we do suppose that n1 n2 a3 are uh, uh, integers so we start with the real space and we know that okay and a2 a1 a2 a3 are primitive lattice vectors and any integer combination of these three vectors would give you the lattice point in real space but we don't know the same for uh, reciprocal space so uh, we have this property that if okay if g has to represent uh, a wave vector which has the same periodicity as that of a lattice so it should uh, of a real lattice it should obey this relationship where e i g dotted with r e should equals to 1 for all possible values of real lattice so let's put these g and r into here we know that these n1 and 2 a3 are integers but we don't know about m1 m2 and m3 so let's put in there so you have i g as uh, this linear sum dotted with this linear sum uh, and now i can use this property which i showed up there that if uh, i can take the dot product so only the terms uh, which have the same index i and j would survive uh, so we are left with uh, this summation uh, in the exponent where m1 n1 plus n2 so this uh, we have this requirement that if g has to be a um, lattice point in the reciprocal space then it should obey this property and this would only be true if uh, m1 
and n1 both are integer similarly m2 and m3 should be integer as well so this gives you the requirement that m1 m2 m3 should be integers otherwise this exponent won't give you uh, um, a value of 1 so we know by this way you can prove that uh, b1 b2 b3 are indeed primitive lattice vector and if you multiply them by some integer value you can uh, find the position of any lattice points within reciprocal lattice so let's take a few examples um, of how you would find reciprocal lattice so let's say there's a, a lattice uh, whose which is shown in two dimensions um, it's a square lattice so uh, you have a1 and a2 which are the primitive unit vectors and the magnitude of both a1 and a2 are the same uh, and they are perpendicular 90 degrees uh, you can also assume that a3 is perpendicular to these two and going out of the page and has the same uh, length as a so it's a cubic lattice a simple cubic lattice defined by these three primitive lattice vectors a1 along x a2 along y and a3 along z both each of them with the same magnitude so that's a perfect cubic crystal uh, how would we find the reciprocal lattice of such a real lattice is uh, we use the uh, the method which we um, stated in the theorem that using this recipe you can find the uh, reciprocal lattice vectors so let's try to find them so first you need to find omega where omega is given simply a1 dot a2 cross a3 which would be the volume of the unit cell within such a cubic crystal system and that is simply because all the three sides are have the same length a so that would be equals to a cube um, you can put this omega and these three here and try to find b1 b2 b3 and if you do so you would come up with these three lattice vectors in reciprocal space so uh, you have 2 pi by a along x 2 pi by a along y 2 pi by a along z so it seems that you get kind of a cube like uh, uh, crystal or lattice in the reciprocal space as well so you have b1 along x with the magnitude given by 2 pi by a and b2 along y with the magnitude given by 2 pi by a and similarly you would have b3 along z uh, and these would be your primitive lattice vectors in reciprocal space uh, again they are cubic but there's a cube which has length given by 2 pi by a instead of an a uh, so we constructed uh, so that's a reciprocal lattice vector of a real cubic crystal system. Now look at a slightly different um, crystal, which is, um, let's say, a rectangular one, or rather uh, an orthogonal one, uh, orthorhombic one, where A1 has a different uh, magnitude as compared to A2. So A1 is definitely larger than A2. And you can also assume that A3 which is perpendicular to these two along z direction is also different so but the important thing here is they have right angles between them each three of them so you can represent such a real lattice with these three primitive lattice vectors a1 equals to a1 magnitude along x a2 equals to a2 magnitude along y and a3 equals to e along uh, z can be the same it can be different doesn't matter so what would the volume of the unit cell the volume of the unit cell would be uh, let's say because all of them are right angle it would be simply given by the uh, scalar product of the three magnitudes of sides a1 a2 and a uh, you can put these two in this recipe and what you get you should get are the uh, reciprocal lattice vectors in the uh, reciprocal space and they come out to be like this so what do you have is you have b1 b2s and b3s and if you look in the two dimensions so b1 uh, has a different magnitude as b2 uh, and since they are reciprocal 
So a1 has a larger magnitude, so it means that 2 pi by a1 has a smaller magnitude, so b1, which you have in the reciprocal space, has a smaller magnitude as compared to b2, although the directions are the same as you have in uh, this real lattice. So uh, a lattice, a real lattice, which is shrinked in the vertical direction, uh, has a reciprocal lattice, which is shrinked in the horizontal direction. Uh, and vice versa so these are two examples where you can use this recipe to find the reciprocal lattice vector from real lattice vector and that's how you can construct uh, one space from another space so you can make all you can construct all these points as a linear combination of b1 and b2s so you can basically construct the whole reciprocal lattice using these two uh, lattice vectors or three lattice vectors uh, if you so the reciprocal lattices may not have a simple relationship with its real counterpart so sometimes uh, they can look a bit different than uh, what the real lattices are so for example let's take such a real lattice with primitive lattice vectors given by a1 and a2 a1 in this direction, A2 in this direction, and let's assume A3 is out of the page. So, what would be the direction of B1, for example? So, B1 would be A2 cross A3, and if you take a, a cross product of A2 with A3, which would be out of the board, so uh, it would be somewhere along this direction. So, that would be uh, the direction of B1. Uh, similarly, if you take, uh, if you want to know what is B2, so for B2 you have to take a cross product of A1 with A3 which should be uh, in a direction which would be up. So if you construct the reciprocal space, it looks something like this. B1 is indeed is in this direction and B2 is in that direction. So uh, the reciprocal counterpart can be rotated in different ways as compared to a real one depending on how this cross product turns out. Uh, you can have even stranger examples in three dimensions. So for example, if I start with an FCC um, or phase centered cubic crystal system. So an FCC uh, is a conventional set or a conventional unit cell of an FCC. Uh, but you can also define a primitive unit vector, a primitive uh, unit vectors A1 and A2 and A3 in such a, a conventional unit cell. We use conventional unit cell more often because they are easier to describe, uh, but they are not primitive, uh, but the latest vectors, which would be, let's say, along these edges, they won't be primitive because uh, you don't have one lattice point in this unit cell. So that's why you can define these primitive unit vector in reciprocal space, uh, which look give you a unit cell of this shape. And these primitive unit vectors are given by such a combination of uh, x and y coordinates, where a is the length of the conventional unit cells. So you have these three uh, primitive lattice vectors in real space. You can you put these into uh, this uh, method and what you get uh, are b1, b2, b3 which would be in reciprocal space and you can work it out that would be part of your assignment that the reciprocal lattice vectors it turns out to be uh, of this shape which is 4 pi by a multiplied by this combination of xyz 4 pi by a multiplied by this combination of xyz and so on now you can construct these reciprocal lattice vector and see how does the lattice looks like so if you construct it this is how it looks so uh, for b1 let's say for b1 you have to do a cross product of a2 with a3 so a2 uh, is in the center of this face and a3 is in the center of the lower face if you do a cross product you see b1 which is in that direction and similarly for B2 and B3, and you can put lattice points uh, which can be made by or which is determined by these three uh, reciprocal lattice vectors which we calculated here. 
you can fill up the whole space and this is no uh, a lattice or a reciprocal lattice but the shape is not an FCC like it's rather a BCC like so if you look at unit cell here it has a, one atom in the center and the rest on the corner so it's definitely like a BCC crystal so uh, the result here is, is that the reciprocal of a face centered cubic system is a body centered cubic system that's a strange result but nevertheless it is like this you can have so a simple the reciprocal if uh, so you ha can have a real lattice or, or sometimes it is also called a direct lattice and the reciprocal lattice of a simple cubic system is also a simple cubic system but the reciprocal lattice of a body centered cubic which is represented by these three um, primitive lattice vector is something like this which is uh, a face centered cubic system and the reciprocal of a face centered cubic system is a body centered cubic system so these are a few example in simple cubic systems um, uh, or the reciprocal of cubic systems so you would have uh, these uh, you can you, you, you can show these two correspondence in your assignment an important component of uh, reciprocal lattices is a uh, brillouin zone um, it's just like a concept of a Wigner side cell in a real lattice uh, uh, an equivalent concept of a brillouin zone exists in a reciprocal lattice so you have a reciprocal lattice point so a reciprocal lattice arrangement so you choose a certain lattice point and then you connect that lattice point um, to its nearest neighbors uh, once you connect that then you draw perpendicular bisectors to the line which you have already drawn here these uh, bisector lines are called as break planes um, or break reflection planes sometimes and once you draw those bisectors you can uh, then identify a certain polygon or and the smallest polygon you can construct out of these bisector is called as the first brilliant zone so this uh, brilliant zone is a brilliant zone in a, a hexagonal uh, recipro like reciprocal lattice uh, as you can identify a hexagon uh, here uh, and the first brilliant zone is also like a hexagon in this case uh, let's uh, a cubic uh, reciprocal lattice so uh, there's a point of a cubic reciprocal lattice the first brilliant zone you can construct by starting from let's say k equals to zero lattice point and connecting it to the nearest neighbors uh, and then draw these bisectors so this is the connecting line between these two and there's the bisector so this would be the break plan then you do the same you get this break plan you get this break plan so on these dotted lines represent the a and the point of cross section of the break planes and the dashed line is the uh, square which is the smallest hex uh, smallest uh, polygon you can make out of here so uh, this a shaded area is the first balloon zone and basically it consists of all the k points uh, which you can reach without crossing any uh, break plane uh, you can draw the next brilliant zone uh, the the second brilliant zone by connecting with the next nearest neighboring lattice point so and those are the green points shown here so start from here then you connect it with this then you draw a bisector line so this green bisector line is uh, the second uh, brag plane here uh, and similarly you do it for all the rest and what you get is uh, you get these green um, brag planes here uh, no you the shaded region which is the green region is the second brilliant zone and it is the second brilliant zone um, because going from the central uh, the k equals to zero point 
to one of the Cape values within the uh, second Bedouin zone, you need to cross uh, one bright plane. So this, the green one is, uh, the region is the uh, second Bedouin zone. And you can fold these into the first Bedouin zone and all those Cape points which are in the second Bedouin zone will completely fit the first Bedouin zone as well. Uh, you can keep on going like this and uh, connect uh, this with the third nearest neighbor points which are these yellow points. Uh, you draw the perpendicular bisector so you connect first with this one you get this uh, break plane then you connect this with this one you get uh, that break plane and so on and so forth. So and uh, then you can draw the next polygon the next polygon would be uh, so the next brilliant zone is this is the is yellow region uh, and this is the yellow region to, to to go to the yellow region yellow point so you start from k equals zero you cross the first break plane then you cross the second break plane and then uh, you reach the yellow region which is the third brilliant zone so um, and so you keep on constructing uh, you keep you can keep on uh, adding more and more brilliant zones into the picture uh, but the basic principle is to reach the nth brilliant zone you have to cross n minus one bright planes so let's look, have a look at uh, the brilliant zone of a body centered cubic system uh, this is a Wigner site cell for uh, uh, body centered cubic system so this Wigner site cell is in real space it looks like this if you do a Fourier transform of um, um, such a unit cell of a body centered cubic system, there is in the reciprocal space a Wigner side cell look like this, uh, which is also called a Brillouin zone. So a Brillouin zone is a Wigner side cell in the reciprocal space, and this exactly looks like uh, an FCC uh, Wigner side cell in real space. So, in other words, uh, uh, the Fourier transform of a BCC is an FCC lattice in reciprocal space. This module will look at the connection between the real lattice uh, and the reciprocal lattice, and we learn that um, one is a Fourier transform of another. Uh, you can also show that if you Fourier transform reciprocal lattice, you go back to the real lattice. Uh, we also formally introduce the concept of reciprocal uh, Bravais lattice. So any real Bravais lattice, we take a Fourier transform and we get reciprocal Bravais lattice. And we can also uh, define or we can also calculate the lattice, uh, reciprocal lattice vectors if you know the real lattice vectors. Um, we, we looked at a few examples of reciprocal lattices. Um, and uh, finally, we introduce the concept of brilliant zones in um, reciprocal lattices. Uh, we would use this concept of reciprocal lattice in the next module and uh, try to establish a connection between the reciprocal lattice vectors and lattice planes. And that concept later on will be utilized um, in the interpretation of X-ray diffraction, which is a method used to uh, investigate crystalline structure of solids.